for years I have been considering the idea of, of a total work of art, the idea that everything I'm doing, from the writings to the paintings to the sculptures, form, form a whole. Very often when I do an exhibition, what I show is only a part of what I think the total work is. But in my mind, all the writings, a bunch of objects that I leave in the studio, even some of the trails of investigation, in my mind are part of the work, even though I have not come out and put it forward. It's a coming of age of sorts. I mean, it is unfolding into something that has been around for a long time within me. The combination of literature, philosophy, writings, and all these different objects, and create a space in which I can bring all these ideas into collision and into friction towards the service of a total experience. The Pearl. At the end of a Kausarina forest, I came to a house, and a boy whose seafaring eyes I remembered was standing at his only window. I took the long way around and found him waiting patiently at the door, his eyes still crusted with sleep. He grabbed my hand and brought me to a narrow rumpled bed I have seen before. Without touching the sheet, I told him it was dry, and he smiled as he lay on the stain. I wanted to grab him, to take him away, but instead, I opened the window so he could hear the birds sing among the pine branches whose needles are always falling. Before leaving, I looked at the sun rising over the forest loaded with pine cones, piercing the top of the dark trees, and on the ground the fox hid among the marilope. In the side project, I like to think of the entire space as some sort of mapping of, of the memory of home. But to a large extent, it's as that home would have felt to itself when no one was around. What I'm trying to do with the side project is convert the home into a home as it might be felt, a subjective home. It's objects transformed by, by abandonment, by engagement, by repeated neglect, or objects that begin to, over time, absorb the emotional energy of the users. I used to think that as I got older, I would understand more things. Because when I was younger, I definitely felt that the world was very um, difficult to understand. The older I get, the more mysterious, more secret the world becomes to me. And those things that really matter, that are worth knowing more about, they are becoming penetrable and reachable. To be an artist means really mostly to try to understand that secret. Not to figure it out, the secret, but just to point to it, to say, this is something I cannot understand, and here's why I don't understand it. What fuels my work is life itself, the questions that come up from it. People often quote Nietzsche's maxim, what doesn't destroy us makes us stronger, to suggest perseverance in the face of difficulty. But that strength is gained at a significant price. And I wonder what it means to be strong in that way. I think in many ways we're more able to withstand pain, maybe more numb, but the stress fractures are there and they manifest themselves as time goes on. They have a way to threaten everything we do because we know they're there, consciously or unconsciously. We report to them. We feel the lack of structural soundness. 
and many ways they define the choices we make, how we make them, what we're willing to take on. So to a large extent, we are those fractures. And they expand, and sometimes they destroy. The boat as vessel and as passage, the boat also as the idea of moving, of departure, of leaving. It also has an aspect of a coffin to it. It's sort of that shape, that containment. So it's not only a, a vessel in the, in the physical way, but also in a metaphoric way. At times, people have imagined that the idea of the boat speaks about exile, but to me it really is a very domestic, personal aspect of departure that I'm interested in, of being somewhat out of place and shifting. The imagery of the boat, particularly with the lighthouse within it. So lighthouse and guidance and, and finding your way in a very complicated rough sea has always been very important. To me and to everybody, it's a simple metaphor, it's a simple idea. The boat and the lighthouse, almost cliche, over, overused. But what I'm interested in is shifting that familiarity and seeing what happens when that Lighthouse and now being confined to the boat, is in the boat, collapsed within the boat. So how does one guide oneself when the light is in the boat itself? A boat that is taking water or that is flooded, that somehow is no longer a vessel in itself, it has been rendered useless, futile, is failed. And in many ways, there's such shame on that failure, such a sense of loss of what could have been and wasn't, which is, in, in a, to a large extent, my associations with childhood and the past. With every situation that happened, there's always the possibility of what could have been, not as a source of nostalgia, but really as a source of, of further cutting into what actually happened. So the beds are made out of steel with pine needles. Pine needles speak to me of, of human hair and they have a, a way to bring the forest into it. But it's also a very specific imagery from my own childhood. It is the aspect of this divided bed, this bed that is split in two by those tears that move down the channel. So time is, is here in the cutting through of the beds. Time is here also in the accumulation of these pine needles over time, falling and falling onto the ground. And time is also here in the actual movement of the water itself, going from one place to the other, never staying put, even if we would like it to stay put for a moment. The Pearl is, in part, a poem from my childhood. 
at times insignificant, at times epic, at times shameful, and always distorted by the veil of years. If he points at anything in particular, it is at the secret inherent in all things. I have seen the sun rise 18,000 times without knowing what it is I see. I repeat what I have heard about the Earth's rotation and the life of flowers, but days continue to pass in mystery. And there are many other things I don't understand.
My interest is in the way that reality and fantasy interweave, creating a fabric of life that sometimes is indistinguishable what's real and what's fantastic. It is fantasy that allows us to see the world in its most radiant, richer, secretive way. <laughs> 